Welcome. Today I'm going to be giving a talk about boarding school survivors and in particular the theme of emotionally shut down, being emotionally cold, emotionally repressed and the legacy of that. So, enjoy. So, I'm out here. It's a lovely summer's day. It's a little cooler here. Um, but I just, yeah, each week I, I share something which has been coming up for me in my own life, whether it's been speaking to clients or speaking to friends and connecting with that subject. So over the last few weeks I've spoken to a few people about boarding school. I spoke with one chap who went to the same boarding school as me and I'm also on a forum which is to do with boarding school survivors. And just this theme which came up in my own life and through boarding school is this thing about emotional repression. And speaking to people over these last few weeks, I see that we're still struggling. We still struggle with that. So I thought I would talk about this for a, for a bit. So where to start? So essentially we get to this age, I think, I don't know why it is, but I've heard from different stories, people get to their, like their 40s, and suddenly it's like, whoa, this realisation. You know, I, I know that men certainly have this with the midlife crisis. From a boarding school perspective, it's almost like we get to 40 and suddenly this realisation that we're, we're shut down. And for us, it's like a new concept. You know, listening to people speak, they're saying, oh, I don't have a problem with our, my emotions. And yet their partners, their husbands, their wives are going, you're emotionally cold, you're shut down, you share nothing about how you're feeling, you never cry, you never uh, get joyful, it's like this flat line, it's almost like being a zombie, that's how I felt, I was a zombie, I, I couldn't feel. And so it seems around that, that age that we get to that point, it's like we suddenly become aware that, oh, we have a problem. And, and it's not because necessarily we feel it, it's because of other people reflecting back to us. And I was reflecting that it seems to be more that it's our partners, our wives, our husbands, or our children, rather than our parents, because our parents have got used to us being that way. I remember when I was about 16, 17, I'd been at boarding school six, seven years, and my mother saying to me, oh, what do you think of this? I um, went, that's all right. And she said, what about this? And I said, oh, that's all right. She says, do you sh never show any emotion? And I didn't say anything at the time, but it's like, <laughs> well, no. I've learned not to get excited or, uh, or down about anything. It's just like this flat line. Nobody knows how I'm feeling. So this legacy, where does it come from? So for me, when we get to boarding school, the age of seven, eight, eleven, we are able to, to cry because we go home, we're with our parents, um, we have our rooms, we close the doors and we can cry, we, we can get upset uh, where people don't see us. It might be that that's okay, in our group of friends, but when we get to boarding school, it, again, this might have changed now, but certainly when I was there in the 80s and the 90s, it was you, yeah, it wasn't acceptable to emote. And some examples of this, it's, it wasn't, I think I had an example of once when I was crying and I think I'd been in boarding school about three or four weeks. I'd really loved it. I got to that point, I didn't want to be there anymore. And something happened, and then I was crying. And the whole dormitory, so it was an open dormitory. We had cubicles, but no doors. And 
suddenly everybody in the dormitory, 25 people, were in my cubicle. And they're all laughing at me, going, Ah, Cross, you're not so strong now, are you? And because I'd been very confident when I'd got to boarding school, it was like it was great. I was good at sports, I was quite clever. But suddenly, you know, this realisation, I didn't want to be there. And I got really humiliated. So that was like, ooh, it's not safe to, to cry. And there were other instances there was one guy on my year who got very angry and people would wind him up, but they used to call him psycho. So they'd wind him up, wind him up, and then he would... Aah! But, you know, it would be on a rugby pitch or it would be, you know... And people used to do it all the time and then they'd laugh at him. You know, and they'd kind of... He wouldn't hurt anyone, but he'd just be raging and... And it was like, yeah, that wasn't okay to get angry. And another example, and I was sharing this with the chap I, I went to school with, uh, who was a few years older than me. And it was an example of this kid who was just arrived at boarding school and he was being bullied by someone on my year. So he was on the year below me. And I was sat on his table and the guy next to me used to kick him. And when he was kicked, he used to go, ah, but scream. And we were in a, a, a dining hall of 800 people, and everybody could hear him. At the beginning, uh, the older girls used to come and say, are you okay? And, and, and then after a few weeks of this, people had had enough. And I remember one time in particular, he was kicked or something happened. And he screamed out, and all of the dining hall, in a unison of voices, go, shut up! And they said his name. Can you imagine that? You're 11 years old, and you have 800 people just telling you to be quiet. And what's it saying to the rest of the, um, the school? That, you know, you don't do that. You don't scream out. You don't show your emotions. And this chap who I spoke to, who was four or five years older than me, he remembers that. And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. So it sticks in our mind that we, we, we can't cry. We can't get angry. So it's like we learn to be, boom, flatline. How I learned to deal with it, again, I other people have dealt with it in different ways, but the way I learned to deal with this is that when I started to feel angry, when I started to feel sad or upset, then I had this inner bully, the inner critic, who'd come in and start calling me names, really abusive, like, you wimp, you know, get over it. Because it was so much preferable for me to be bullied by myself rather than being bullied by the 25 people in my dormitory. So I learnt to suppress, to suppress my emotions. And, you know, after that, that incident where I cried, it's like I never cried again at school, not openly. I remember crying in my bed quite a bit at night time, lying with a pillow on my head crying. And that point I never emotionally showed this and the same with anger uh, it's like I learned to be this silent aggressive type that was my way of dealing with it so I just wouldn't say anything but I wouldn't rage but I'd just stare someone down and so I just got a reputation and people stayed away from me so it was like my defense mechanism but what happens I feel and why I'm kind of giving this talk is that those behaviours that we've learnt as a seven, eight-year-old, eleven-year-old, we then continue because you know we we you know we keep them going. It becomes a program. But then after we leave boarding school, we keep that on, and it's only when we meet a partner or we meet friends and they go, oh, you know, they're shut down. But a lot of times, 
those who were friends, um, those who went to the, the same schools. It's like we keep that story going. And, but it doesn't serve us anymore. It's like, so for me, I just kept people away from me. So I left boarding school and that continued, you know, and I didn't have friends because, well, you know, I was very cold. And I remember working one time, I was in Africa and this guy said to me, he says, you know, you're very cold. You very seem to be very distant. You don't really engage. And I reflected, but, you know, it's like I couldn't connect to that. Um, so I have done a little list. So at the beginning, we see this as a, a good thing to be emotionally repressed, you know, because that's what we've learned. So speaking to others, realizing that they don't s even notice they're emotionally oppressed as boarding school survivors. They don't notice that. And in fact, you know, if anything, if they notice it, it's a good thing. So for example, at funerals, I remember my father's funeral in my 20s, my sister complimenting me, saying, oh, you're really strong, you didn't cry. And I think, actually, no, I lost a few friends or family in my teens and my 20s, and I didn't cry once in a funeral and it's like and others were like oh you're you're really strong it's like no no I'm emotionally repressed I would love to grieve my father <laughs> and cry and it was interesting at that point when I did, started to do my healing and my process work you know late 20s I started to grieve for all those people who I'd lost and I cried and I cried and I cried and I cried and it was okay to cry and I allowed myself to cry and it felt so good. And now it's like, as you can see, I, I am able to access my tears much more easily and I can cry when I want to. Um, what else have I said? Yeah. Yeah, so these emotions, this vulnerability, we've learned that it's, it's weakness and we get bullied. So we learn very quickly that we either stop it and we find whatever means or we're going to get picked on. And this guy uh, at my school, I mean, he was picked on for quite a few weeks, probably months, until he learned that when the school suddenly went, shut up, he was like, oh, okay there's nobody there to support me you know and I was reflecting to this this guy who I spoke to last week and he says isn't it interesting that no teacher stepped in and thought oh is there a problem here and partly for me the reason being is that these teachers they've all been to boarding school themselves and therefore they're running that same story that oh it's just homesickness you'll get over it you're homesick and yes, you'll soon be reprogrammed <laughs> and you'll soon be completely emotionally shut down and cauterized. And you know, so, yeah. So yeah, so then, you know, the, the final piece for me is this legacy of the emotional repression is that on one level we yearn, <laughs> we yearn for connection with others. It's like this deep yearning within ourselves as boarding school survivors. We want to be touched. You know, there was no touch for me. You know, if you touched another boy, you were gay. And if you were called gay, that was, you know, that was the worst insult ever. Out of 800 uh, students, when I was at school, nobody came out as gay. No, you know, it was like, no, it was the worst insult ever. So this, you know, there was no touch. So for me, it's like we yearn. I yearn to be touched and yet it reviled me. I remember in my 20s, someone touching me. Like, it was like, oh, stay away. It's like, I just can't be touched. 
And yet there's part of us that yearns for that connection with others. And yet where I feel this thing, this where we get to is where we're kind of stuck. We, we want and we yearn for this, but we don't know how to connect. We don't know how to connect with others and, and feel again. We don't know how to feel. Um, so I will do another video at an, some other point um, about you know developing and healing the emotions. How I kind of have done it, and who you know people I've learned from, and. I'll just go through a few of these these kind of bits and pieces here is so how do we heal how do we, we we do this and I'd say the first thing is it's patience and it's time and yet in the same way that you went from being a very emotionally versant and you know you uh, being able to love and have that connection that joy that laughter you learn to suppress all of that therefore you can learn again it's just a skill you learn that skill to repress and now you can learn that skill to open up and it's just a different skill and if you're watching this and you're acknowledging oh actually yeah I do feel emotionally repressed then you know the truth is you can learn this I learned this I was extremely repressed like I said I hadn't cried for years and suddenly uh, I started to cry every day and now I feel you know I'm very able just to express my emotions and feel feel them so that's the first thing is it's like it, it's a skill which can be learned a skill like driving a car you just it's like learning this skill again then it, it can be done there's many people who have been to boarding school who have been repressed who are now coming out and going oh yeah I feel I feel actually happy now the next thing is it's patience be patient with yourself you know it took you many years to learn that skill of being repressed to get it properly you know every now and then again you'd have an outburst you'd get upset and then you'd go oh and you, you learn to suppress and it's the same thing it's like being patient patient with yourself that I can learn to be to be open to love again. For me, one of the great healings was a, a great therapist. Um, I worked with a Jungian analyst, and I found that, you know, I've personally found like counselors or psychotherapists, if they have no experience of boarding school, then for me it was no use. It was just like talking. It was talking and I wasn't getting anywhere. And I spent two, three years just doing that. When I started working with a Jungian analyst, started to work with my dreams and my unconscious, that's when I started to shift. Because it was me seeing myself rather than someone telling me. And it was just in the head. And that's what I see with us as boarding school. It's like we're dead from the neck down. You know, we're not in our bodies. We're very clever. You know, because we've learnt to be clever, that's the way we've learned. But we've suppressed the emotion, we don't have a connection with our bodies. So, having a really great therapist, um, so to talk through and to work with the unconscious. So, some of the things I found with things like EFT, matrix re imprinting, these, you know, Psych K, they're all things which work with the unconscious and we change our unconscious beliefs and that's you know that's for me key for change for my own my own change um yeah and i think the last thing i'll just say on this is um understanding partner so if you're listening to this and your partner is was at boarding school then thank you thank you so much for your support supporting these men and women and, you know, in order for them to heal, in order for us to heal, it's like having your support and your love and your gentleness and your perseverance. There needs to be a willingness on their part that they're, they're ready to change. 
and yet having a supportive like I do. I have an amazingly supportive woman. And when I go into my stuff, she supports me. And yet when she goes into her stuff, I'm there to support her as well. It's, that's a two-way thing. So she wasn't at boarding school, um, but she has a big open heart and really uh, has been ever so patient with me. So I'm very appreciative of that. So, yeah, so that for me is a legacy of uh, the emotional repression. It's like we can do it. We can do this, this work. And I, I will do a, a, a longer video about how we open up our hearts and heal. There's lots of exercises that I've learned over the years. And, yeah, I can really feel my heart now, whereas pff, I had no idea what someone meant. If they said, oh, what do you feel? It's like... What do you mean, feel? <laughs> what do you think I am? So, yeah, yeah. So this is a much longer video, but uh, it feels like it's a huge subject. And especially if you've been to boarding school, this is one of our main things that we struggle with, I found, is this ability to feel again. We've learned to suppress this, and now is our time to reopen and start to feel again, both the pain and the, the happiness, the, the joy, and the love. It's like feeling it all rather than what we've been is just zombies. We've been zombies and um, we've been shut down and now's the time to start to heal. So hopefully this gives you some uh, inspiration to, to start to search for answers and know that you can do it and that you are doing it just by watching this. It's like that's the right you know you're in stepping in the right direction and yeah please do comment below and you know any support or any guidance that i can give then um, yeah please do ask questions below and yeah i wish you well and uh, i know from my own experience that you will heal your heart and your emotions will flow again